Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. And I find generally Christians who can move mountains but cannot manage very simple relationships. And because of that, many of them cannot stand in the presence of God. You know, the seven pillars of faith. Faith sits, it's a wisdom sits, Proverbs 9 says, wisdom sits on seven pillars. And some of the pillars of wisdom include, said, and I will give you a wisdom and a mouth. If a man has wisdom and he doesn't have the mouth, then he wants to lend you wisdom. He said, well, um, uh, he said, please go and sit down. But he has the wisdom, but he doesn't have the mouth. So his wisdom is despised. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, there's a poor man who gave wisdom to a city to save it from a siege of a great king. But every man forgot him. Why? He lacked favor. Favor is the rewarder of wisdom. Where there is no favor, wisdom will be despised. The Bible says, and God gave Joseph before Pharaoh. Wisdom, that's not enough. If he solved that crisis before Pharaoh, without favor, Pharaoh would just release him back to his family. And then God gave him favor. Favor gives you the reward network that the entire wisdom you have in your genealogy can never give you. It gives you the divine reward. So that's why Pharaoh made Joseph prime minister, because of favor. Praise God. So favor is a pillar of wisdom. And on and on, that's not what we're talking about today. Praise God. Amen? Amen. <sighs> so faith has seven pillars. And on these seven pillars, faith sits. The Bible says that you have need of patience after you have done the will of God that you may receive the promise. So a patience is a pillar of faith. The prodigal son had faith. He told his father, give me my portion. He took his portion by faith, but he lacked patience. And so he wasted everything. And the elder brother had patience, but no faith. So he had nothing. But you must have faith and patience. The Bible says, some who have faith without a good conscience have suffered shipwreck. If you don't have a good conscience, you will use your faith negatively and then it will suffer shipwreck. Or which some have suffered shipwreck. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says our faith worketh by love. So if there's no love, the faith will not work. Faith without works is dead. So without works, faith is what? You have faith, but it's what? Dead. And then faith and wisdom. Wisdom is relationship. Relationship. And you must know how to manage relationships. I found that some things have to be taught in the word. He said in Luke 11, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples to pray. No one is born with the knowledge to pray. You must be taught how to pray. If you see somebody say, when I was born, I was born a Christian so I can pray. I've heard that before. I said, no. You have to say, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught. What you are born with, you are born with knowledge of good and evil. That's why some children lie and are naughty. They are born with that. Amen. Then the Bible says the rod of correction will drive out the naughtiness. Praise Jesus. I hope I'm not sounding mean. <laughs> so relationship. Relationship is so serious that God said, if you have an issue with your brother, don't come before my presence. You know, the Bible says, husband, dwell with your wife with knowledge, lest your prayers be what? Hindered. So if the relationship between husband and wife is broken down, the prayers will not work and it's possible the children become prime target for Satan and mincemeat. Why? Relationship. Relationship. I find that the human beings are the most difficult things to manage. If you take a remote and face a TV and you press the volume up, it will go up. Except the TV has a fault or the remote is fault. If it's not faulty, if you press volume up, the voice will go up. If you change the channel, it will change. But human beings, you can press the volume up and the person over there, the volume drops. 
You can reduce the volume and the volume goes up. You can say, oh, Sister Jane, how are you? You're looking good today. Oh, so I was not looking good before, Abby. <laughs> now, that's not what you mean. The volume didn't, uh, didn't realign with the response. You know, I said, I ah, know. I was just saying, you oh, praise God. Ah, your husband, ah, he's looking at uh, you behind him. I'll be, ah, <laughs> praise God. So human beings are very difficult to manage. And you need to be taught how to manage human beings so that it does not affect your relationship with God. Because your relationship with men can affect your relationship with God. He even said, when you bring your gift at the altar, and you remember there's an issue between you and brother, he said, leave your gift. God says, I will not take your gift. Until you are first reconciled to your brother, then come back and offer your sacrifice. So relationship means an association between two or more people. It could be a permanent association, such as marriage. Or it could be temporal. It could be social, cultural. It could be spiritual. It could be business. It could be family. It could be neighbors. You can have an association with your neighbors. And with your family. Your husband's family, your wife's family, your own family. Their family from the same mother that don't greet. But they greet from other mothers. Praise God. <laughs> Some are regulated by law and custom. Some relationships are regulated. If you go into a business partnership with somebody, maybe you're in a law firm, you have a partner, it's regulated by law. If you're in a relationship that is marriage, it could be regulated by custom. And then you find out that what you can do and get away here in Nigeria, you cannot do it in a place like London and get away with it. You probably could tell your mother-in-law, sorry, don't come to my house tomorrow. I'm busy. It may work in London. <laughs> it might not work here. You might be looking for big, big trouble. Right? <laughs> Praise God. Relationships are very important to us as Christians because they affect our relationship with God. Matthew 5, 21 to 24. 1 John chapter 2, verse 8 to 11. They all speak of a relationship that will not work with God if it's not working with men. We are called to a life of separation. You know, I've heard people say, Mike, ah, I don't greet anybody. Or I don't want any insult from anybody. So when I wake up, I just go my own. JJ, I've had enough of insult. That's a life of isolation. We're not called to a life of isolation. We're called to a life of separation. And that separation is in your mindset, not in your lifestyle. In your mindset. So we're called to a mind of to a life of separation. So you can't say, I don't greet my neighbors. They're very nasty. We had a misunderstanding. And it was an issue between my dog and their dog. So we just everybody just goes his own way. And I wake up in the morning, I don't want stress. You greet them now, they'll think you are you are you are seeking a favor from them. So I just walk my own straight. That's isolated, it's not allowed in Christendom. Even people who have wronged you, the Bible says you should greet them. In fact, in Christendom, we greet those who have wronged us more than those who have not wronged us. Jesus said, if you salute them that love you, what do ye more? So you have to salute those who have wronged you. There are people who have wronged me. When I see them, I greet them. Good morning. They don't have to answer. The Bible didn't say they should answer me. The Bible says I should greet them. When you understand this, whether they answer you or not, it doesn't matter. What is important is that you have obeyed God by greeting them. He says, salute them that hate you. They've wronged you. They've stolen from you. Greet them. But they didn't answer me. When you see them the next day, greet them. You obey the Lord. Separation is achieved through Romans 12, 1-2. 
by the renewing of our mind and interaction. Jesus spent a good time with sinners, glutons, and drunkards. He was not like them, both in thinking and acts. If you look at Matthew 9, 10 to 13, he was with them, but he was not like them. Did you hear me? Jesus was with them, but not like them. We will interact with different types of people in, on a daily basis. Sinners, saints, and even angels. Do you know you also interact with angels? In Hebrews 13.2, it says, Be careful to entertain strangers, for some haven't have entertained angels unaware. So maybe you think you're only interacting with human beings. No, you are interacting on a daily basis with both human beings and spirits. That's the word of God. I didn't bring it up. Please put up Hebrews. Hebrews 13.2. Hebrews 13.2. What does it say? So that means on a daily basis, you're interacting with your neighbors, you are interacting with your enemies, you are interacting with your friends, and you are interacting with spirits. We interact with agents of darkness. Second Corinthians eleven fourteen he says, "Don't be surprised that Satan has turned himself to a minister of light." So you interact with agents of darkness. You interact with family, both hostile and welcoming. In the course of our interaction, depending on what we do or say, our relationship with God will be affected. We are either really rewarded or we can be judged as a direct consequence of how we relate with people. Matthew chapter 5. I read verse 22, and it says, I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother without the cause shall be in danger of the judgment. So, your relationship with someone can drag you into judgment with God. And whoever shall say to his brother, Raka, Raka is a slogan or an idiom. You always say, Ode, idiot, mugu, fool. So, Raka is a norm. An idiot, sorry, a, sorry, and it's a norm. It's an abusive norm that you do, right? So, you say, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. Whoever shall say, you fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. So, what it means is that relationship can drag a human being into hellfire. Someone said, said, I went to hell, and I returned, and I saw this man, Wonderful Christian he was. I, 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 it may sound true. I said, what brought him to hell was unforgiveness. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. Those of you who use computer, in your computer is a desktop that has different icons that function differently for different things. You have what they call a recycle bin. When you put on your computer, it tells you the operation system of your computer, whether it's Microsoft, and um, whether it's um, 13, was eh? Windows 13. If it's XP, you are still in um, the, um, the olden age of uh, dinosaurs. <laughs> but I guess almost laptops now are um, Windows 10, 11, 12, 13, God, you know, probably some are using 18, I don't know, but. So there's a recycled bin. Now, when you have a file that you don't need again, and you right-click on that file, it gives you option 
which includes delete. When you press delete, that file goes into the recycle bin and it's no more functioning in the operation system of the computer, but it can be retrieved whenever you need it. Every time you sin against God and you ask for forgiveness, he sends you into the... Now, in that recycle bin, God doesn't know what is inside of it because he said he will send it into the sea of forgetfulness. He remembers your sin no more. So, that recycle bin in the spiritual, whatever is there, God does not have an idea what he has no access to it. Now, when someone sins against you, and you refuse to forgive. God goes back to the recycle bin. When you press your recycle, it gives you option. Empty recycle bin. Restore file. They'll go to you and restore your sins back. And it lands in that person's life. And he's in problem with God. That's why I said, if you do not forgive, neither will your heavenly father forgive you your own trespasses. And if you remember the story of the man that owed 50 and the man that owed 500, that just explains it clearly. The one that owed 500 dinner, right? The master forgave him. And he was released like God did. Then somebody owed him 50 dinner, right? Then he refused to forgive. Then they reported to the master that he has arrested the man that owed him 50 and I put him in the prison. Then they sent for him and said, but I forgave you. You ought to have forgiven. He said, you know what the master now said? Binding, that means the sin that was forgiven is now restored and recovered back from the recycle bin. Bind him and cast him into prison till he has paid the last farthing. So be careful how you relate with people, lest your sins are recalled from the recycle bin. I'm not trying to make you scared. They have no effect on you. And the day you die, they empty the recycle bin. So a person can be in danger of hellfire from mismanaging relationships. Then it's serious. Praise God. Dawarakai is a mild abusive word meaning senseless. To cast aspersion on the intellectual capacity of a person. To call a person an ignoramus. Don't mind that swegbe. Don't mind that mumu. Don't mind that Praise God. Hallelujah. In James chapter 5, verse 16, he's talking to somebody that is sick. And you can tell why sometimes people are sick. He said, confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another. So it starts with fault. So that means there is an issue between me and somebody. Now, they are trying to achieve something. Pray one for another that you may be healed. So, a bad relationship can cause an incurable sickness, can cause cancer, and can cause a terminal disease. It is serious. It can cause hair. It can cause a terminal disease. That's why this kind of sickness, if it is caused, you know, when the, the man that was at the pool of Bethesda, who had been there for 32 years, was sick, Jesus came in and said... Take your bed and walk. Man said, I have no man to carry me into the pool. Then he said, he took his bed and said, sin no more. Lest a worse thing come upon thee. What caused his sickness was sin. The paralytic that was brought in through the roof. He was paralyzed. People think you can sin and get away with it. I'm only no. Hey, you can do it secretly. Mm. It has cost people health. Now, when the paralytic was brought in, Jesus first said to the paralytic, thy sins are forgiven thee. That means, without tackling that sin that causes sickness, that man cannot be healed. Who did he sin against? Probably God. Here in James, the sickness is caused by wrong or mismanagement of relationship. And therefore, he says, for you to be well, go and confess your fault one to another. Then, pray for that person and you shall be healed. If the greatest healer 
lay hands on and pray for you. It will not work. If it works, that person will return sick. Until he has gone to make peace with whoever he's fighting with. Seven things that will help you. I don't know why people like seven. I like seven. Seven, 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 seven. Because if you say 35 things, it will be too long. People will forget. And I once watched somebody say 35 things to look out for in a mate. When you want to marry somebody, check out the 35 things. So someone came to propose to the lady. So she went to the book, was checking of the 35 things to see whether he has those 35 things in order to say yes or no. Surprisingly, being in love is not one of the seven things to look out for in a mate. You don't marry somebody because you're in love with them. A beautiful artist once married a, another artist that was on drugs. He sent her to an early grave. Say so you're in love. It's not love. We are commanded to love as Christians. Say, love one another. How? As I have loved thee. How did he love us? Unconditional act of goodwill. So what it means is there is nothing your wife does to you. There is nothing she does to you. You will be good to her. That's what he's saying. You will not. That love doesn't repay evil with evil. It repays good with evil. We did evil to God. He gave us good. That's the way. He didn't say you should love. Say one another. is a foundational basis of all relationship. It's an act of goodwill. So that means I remember I was talking to a lady. Say if my husband, if I catch him committing adultery, I too will go out. I said, then you are an adulterer. She said, no. I said, you just told us what would trigger your adultery. It's always been in you. And she kept quiet. <laughs> I said, you are an adulterer. The only thing that can trigger is if your partner goes into adultery. Right? So you want to repay evil with evil. So seven things to help you manage relationships so you don't have problems with God. Amen. It's so quiet. Guess you're, are you fighting with someone or something? Somebody once came to meet me and she was angry with somebody, so she had written a letter to send to the person, a nasty letter, and then showed me first. So I just took the letter, I just shredded it to pieces. I said, never in your entire life register a grievance by any means whereby it can be stored. Never. Never, never, never. I was trying to settle a quarrel between the husband and wife. He said, wait, pastor. Went to bring a phone. See the nasty text she sent. I said, oh, I expect this lady to be wiser than this. You call him. And if you're expressing your grievances by text, start with a prayer. He can't show anybody. <laughs> and if he shows, it's for good. You son of a bitch. Oh, God. And you know what I found? The abused remembers more than the person that abuses. If you're abused, if they call you a devil, a bitch, a useless, and a stupid, four words. After 10 years, you remember they called you those four words. The person that called you those four doesn't remember the four. Say, the only thing I know, I shouted on her. No. You said, eh, me? I said, never, ever register any grievance, especially with words that are not too pleasant on any means whereby it can be stored. Don't. So I shredded it. Do you know they are best of friends today? And that one never knew she wrote a nasty stinker. And of course, you are not going to tell her that I wrote a nasty stinker. No, you just smile and wave and dance. That's all. And it was that person that helped that person to achieve her major goal in life. Satan is not the one wrecking relationships. Lack of wisdom is what is wrecking relationships. Leave Satan out of it. Satan does not try. What he tries is your faith. That's what he tries. Amen? Amen. 
Someone called me once and said, I have problems with my friends. Each time I'm nice to them, they repay me evil. I said, about how many friends do you have? I said about, she said about 40. And I said, and you relate all of them as your friends? She said, yeah. I said, that's a problem. They are not all your friends. Some are your friends. You should locate those who are your friends. Some are acquaintances. Their relationship for greeting. Do you know there are people that like to be greeted? There are people that when they complain about their daughter-in-law, can you imagine? She doesn't greet me. After she married my son, she can't call me to greet me. So, I remember, I used to have, I used to go to, I have a barber, we're very good friends, and when I go to bob my hair, and I greet him, good morning, he won't answer me. He just be opening the bag, bring out the clipper, put the oil, I said, good morning, he won't answer me. Then he'll bob, and he'll bob well. I mean, is my hair not looking good? Then I told the Lord, I said, I won't go there again. The Lord just asked me, why did you go there? For greeting or for babbing? I said, for babbing. He said, does it babble? I said, yes. Then go and bab and leave. If you want someone to greet you, call your children and tell them every morning, come and greet me. Every afternoon, come and greet me. Every night, come and Is that what you want? Greetings. But let me tell you, greetings doesn't make a man. So I wasn't bothered about greeting, but now he greets. Those of you who have been with me to him, we greet so well. I said, ah, my pastor. In fact, when I was playing tennis with somebody, he was on the supporter stand by my side. I said, pastor's going to beat that man. We are supporting pastor. And <laughs> praise God. <laughs> praise Jesus. I said, some are for greetings. Some are for prayers. Some are for counsel. When you are down and you need counseling. That's what they are meant for. Some are for your education to help you in your studies. And that's where it ends. So everyone must grade all relationships in their lives. And you must know where the limit ends. It is when you don't know the limit that you go and tell somebody who has no business in counseling you what happened between you and your husband? Then the next thing you are hearing it all over town. Why did you tell that man? Why did you bring out confidential information? You don't go to a, you don't go to your friend. You don't go to a, when you go to a lawyer, you have a legal issue. You tell them what they need to know to help you with your case. When you go to the doctor, you don't tell them about your sickness that the doctor was, no, 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 that's, that has no business. You tell the doctor that. Jesus said, I have many things to tell you, but you are not able to handle it. So when Paul comes, the Holy Spirit comes, you would have matured more. Then I will tell you. Information is given according to the ability to manage and process it profitably. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it, and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again, same time next week, I want to tell you, don't give up. Faith works. It's working, and it will work in your life. God bless you.